Kohen Holo Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakhakudash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone of Ruel. I am not a member, however, I've entered into their labors. Peace, mercy, and blessings to the sincere brothers and sisters doing this wherever you are, whatever your lot may be. Uh, this is another quick one. It's just a, I wanted to show uh, uh, an exercise that I do um, with myself. I don't really know what to call it. I guess you can, you know, whatever. If you can think of something clever for yourself, then do it. But I like to call it the, uh, you know, the precept game. And I take, um, take a chapter. Uh, out of, I mean, any book you want. I mean, and it helps keep you sharp, um, especially when dealing with prophecies. And you can also add, um, not only can you find precepts, do your best to look for precepts for it. You can also, if it pertains to a future prophecy, look for things, look for articles, look for, for you know, ways, or look for ways to link it to what's about to happen. Um, a lot of the times you will see, you know, a lot of the prophets that, you know, the men of Great Millstone, they will have other things that already have, you know, fulfill that requirement. So dig into that a little deeper if they don't already do it. And it will help strengthen your memory. Um, of course, you need all you you need the spirit first and foremost. You need the Holy Spirit to be supping with you. But after that main and pivotal requirement. Um, this thing is, it's a work in progress. You don't just learn it and then know it forever. Remember, we're in these finite bodies, you know, we're in, um, uh, these chains of darkness and we're, you know, you, you're laden with sin and you're subject to whatever is, whatever elements that may come, you know, while you're on this plane and in these, uh, flesh suits. So that could be forgetfulness. Um, hell, it could be laziness. Right, and you don't want to be uh, lukewarm. Let me see. I want to. We're gonna get another one. Actually, I need to open up another window. Get that on over here, cause we want to. I want to get that lukewarm real quick. Let's see. Because otherwise, the Lord will spew us out. I will spew you or whoever it is. Come on, man. I forget where that's at. And then it'll help you remember where things are. So that way, uh, you know, you don't have to rely on a computer or a search engine. You can turn the pages and get to where you need to get to. So I, that's a work in progress for me as well. All right. So this is Revelation 3. We'll start. Thir this is Revelation 3. Uh, but we're going to start at 14. And this is uh, the message to the, the, the different churches right, that were set up. Okay, and unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans, write these things, saith the, saith the Amen. Uh, oh, let me slow down. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy work, and that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would rather thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So we don't, that's, that, we don't want to go, we don't want to travel down that road. Um, we want to be on the right side of judgment. We want to be protected. And I read this quite a bit, but I don't, uh, never clicked on it. We're going to get to the exercise in a minute. <laughs> uh, metaphor of the condition of the soul wretchedly fluctuating between a toper and a fervor of love. So, and you know, a righteous man falls seven times, right? But you got to get back up. This is a fight. And this is something you have to continuously do. And it's like you don't, you're not going to eat food one time when you're hungry and then uh, be satisfied for the remainder of your life. You have to continue to feed yourself and, and giving yourself this knowledge and receiving this knowledge is likened unto, you know, swallowing the roll, right? Or, or drinking of living water. So it's imperative that we continue on this. And you will fall off. There are times where you're going, you know, because it happens to all of us, but you must fight. All right. So here's a little exercise I do. Um, we'll, I'm going to use it on Ezekiel 37. Uh, I just particularly, I don't know what it is. I just really like uh, 
this chapter. I, I, there are, I think, about 10 that are my all-time favorites, but we're going to start with this one, right? So I don't want to exactly read it all the way through. However, I will um, uh, read a little more, especially because, hey, well, it, it can never hurt to read the word. So here we go. Here's the exercise, the precept game, right? All right, so the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Uh, verse 3, let's see. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, power oh, oh yeah how power thou knowest and you also try to envision these things you know you know we don't know what the lord looked like but you can envision you know the 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 throne he's on or you can envision just use your imagination from what you can glean from the scriptures all right because um visualization truly helps you to uh get in the spirit as well and of course i say all these things uh predicated that the holy spirit is working with you Verse 4, again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith Yahweh power unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. And the more you read, the more you start to piece these things together, because this is a this is a, a very poetic book. We are a poetic and deep people. So you can. Uh. The first thing you're going to think of with this one, uh, you can think of the, the creation story with Adam, right? And it also talks about it. Uh, Second Ezra speaks on it. So we'll go um, you'll hear certain words and, and you'll get better at it. You'll hear certain words and there will be triggers and you'll just type those words in and then you'll pull, you'll glean a bunch of different scriptures and then you can sort it out from there. And then when you sort it out, write them down. Go back and look into your notebook. And I'm guilty of not looking in my notebook. So we need, you know, I'm going to call myself out. We need to continue to do these things. These are basic things that you can do. So because this word is not always going to be available. All right. So let's get Genesis 2. Right. So that's the creation of man and woman. It's a creation story. Right. And we want. And there are the generations of heaven and Lord has created. God made the earth of the heavens. And every plant of the field, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the earth. All right, I think the verse 7 is what we're looking for. And Yahweh formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And that, that breath of life, he was given, uh, um, that can also be like enough to give him the understanding because you're made living when you have these laws, statutes, and commandments, when you, which was oral back then, right? That's how Noah was able to build an altar uh, post flood, or, or and they knew, and he knew what, uh, or Abraham built an altar as, or as well, and you also the beasts that were taken unto the ark. That's what I wanted to say. The beasts that were taken unto the ark, um, they were clean and unclean because this tradition was oral, and you're made living as an Israelite when you are living according to the law statutes and commandments all right it gives you the proper balance to do everything that you need to do live the way you need to live eat the way you need to eat treat people the way they should be treated punish people the way they should be punished and and, and all is a perfect balance right um and you can also hit second esdras am i already here nope all right so you can also hit second esdras for an additional precept because he talks about uh about Adam as well. And there are many more, but I'm just uh, three. Just showing you a little trick of the trade. All right. Okay. So, O Lord, who bears rule, thou spakest at the beginning when thou didst plant the earth and thy and that thyself alone and commandest the people and gave body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hand and didst breathe into him the breath of life and he was made living before thee. So you can start piecing these precepts together and it talks about, or is, and let's, let's keep reading, and thou leadest him into paradise, which thy right hand planted before the earth, before ever the earth came forward. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way which he transgressed, which he did, while we're in the predicament we in, and immediately thou appointest death in him, All right, so the, the, the wages of sin, <coughs> excuse me, 
So you can uh, lead into another precept about the wages of sin being death. And you see how it all just starts to come together. But of course, the spirit has to be working with you. So if it's not, pray for it. And you can't just ask one time. You continuously ask. If it's something you really want, you know, if you if you really die hard about this, you're going to keep asking the Lord until he grants you what you need. Because if you ask things according to his will, he's going to give it to you. He ain't going to give it to you when you want it all the time, but you're going to get it. All right, because uh, continue and appoint his death in him and in his generations of whom came nations, tribes, people and kindreds out of number. All right. So that's how you can just kind of, you know, you'll you'll go down a rabbit hole of truth, a beautiful rabbit hole of truth. Uh, where, would I, where would we go? Thirty seven. Let's go back. <clears throat> Come on. One more. Oh, because we was over here. That's why. Dang it. All right. There we go. Okay. And then you can also do the same for um, the rest of it. So that's just something I wanted to show, brother. If you didn't already know, some of us who are newer, like myself, you can do these things. Uh, let me see. Let's go now. Let's do one more. The vision explained. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. And another thing that I did mention in the beginning, look up GMS Ezekiel 37. Okay. And there, there are detailed descriptions, there are detailed breakdowns of what this means. So you can do that. And that is that when you gain that understanding, you can, pre you can piece precepts together. All right. So that, but. That's not what this is about. This is just to show, you know, how you can, you know, do something for yourself and with yourself to uh, um, strengthen that, uh, that, uh, strengthen your knowledge. All right. Because we ought to be always learning and always seeking. Uh, verse 12. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, thus saith Yahweh, power, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you can go to Ephesians. Speaking of graves, because you can kind of, you know, think about, you know, a man is dead. If you're living in sin, uh, or if you're living without the understanding, you know, honey, he's dead while he liveth. Well, that's that's like that's Thessalonians, uh, she that liveth in pleasure. But let's go to Ephesians. I need two. Okay, so we made alive, and then in Hamashiach, all right, and you have quickened who were dead in trespass and sin. Um, let's see, we're in times past. We walked according to the course of this world, and according to the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit that is now worketh in the children of disobedience. These are dead, dry bones, if you're walking like this, right? And among whom also we all had our conversation in times. Past in lust in our flesh, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as uh, others. Uh, we'll skip to verse 5. Even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Hamashiach, by grace ye are saved. So, Ezekiel 37 is more mainly about the understanding of... Um, going out that truth going out and uh, those of us understanding who we are and what comes with that is a responsibility and then you once you have that basic understanding of ezekiel 37 or any chapter any prophecy anything like that once you have a basic understanding start looking read through it look for some familiar words and, and, and piece the precepts together it'll keep you sharp it'll keep you uh, uh ready to go because you know we're supposed to um have an answer for people if they ask Right? You don't want to be caught slipping. And if it's something you don't, you ain't going to know everything. But strive for mastery. All right. So, with that being said, that's all I wanted to get. That's all I wanted to show, brothers, mainly those of us who are young, like myself. Thank you. Mainly those of us who are young, like myself, just a just a quick way to kind of really strengthen that that bond you have with the Lord, with Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, and and strengthen your knowledge in the Scriptures, because these are the stability, wisdom, and knowledge.
I don't know if it's thy time or there's Isaiah 33. So Isaiah 33 and 6. So that's what we need. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time and strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. All right. So the more you read, the more knowledge you get and you understand the mind of the Lord and you know he ain't nothing to be playing with. All right. So with that being said, I will feel we'll officially end it there. All right. So you need that wisdom and that knowledge and it's going to come right here from these scriptures. All right. Uh, Shalom.